Discovery in a new court case uh, launched against Fox News from Dominion, the machine operation company, the, the, the vote counter machine operation company, has revealed what we've always known. Uh, Fox News is lying to its audience. It's lying to everyone. It's even making jokes about it behind closed doors in text messages. Uh, obviously, this is not the first time, nor will it be the last news uh, cycle that comes out about this kind of thing. Uh, Tucker Carlson has had to admit in court that uh, everything he says is a fabrication. It's just like it's, you know, satire. It's fake. Uh, Alex Jones has had to do that in divorce court. But it doesn't matter. Newly revealed text messages that show how some of the biggest names at Fox News actually felt about the bogus election fraud claims that they were pushing at the same time on Fox's air. So these messages were revealed as in court filings. This is part of a Dominion's billion dollar lawsuit against the right wing media channel. CNN senior media reporter Oliver Darcy joining us with more. So these documents, perhaps in some ways, what they're revealing is not surprising to folks who work in the media, maybe people in Washington, but maybe revealing for a lot of dedicated viewers. Yeah, I think this this court filing, the messages contained in it really exposed Fox News as uh, frankly, a propaganda machine uh, in search of profit. You see that the top executives, people like Rupert Murdoch, as well as the top hosts, people like Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, they knew, they privately knew and acknowledged behind the scenes that the election fraud claims being pushed by President Donald Trump's campaign were bogus. They were not true. And yet, the network allowed these claims to make its way onto their air, and they uh, were shy about fact-checking. In fact, in, in one case, one of the Fox News correspondents, uh, Jackie Heinrich, the White House correspondent, fact-checked a tweet from Trump pushing election denialism. And behind the scenes, Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity talked about how they could get her fired. Simply for, for fact-checking, for, for fact doing checking. her job as a reporter when you're supposed to report the yeah. truth and put only the facts out there. That's precisely right. And she, she wasn't fired. She's still at the network. But that tweet that she did post, fact-checking the president, did eventually come down. I, I think this shows how void of any journalistic mm -hmm. ethics the people at the top of Fox News were. They were not caring about, you know, what the right thing to do as a reporter is. They were caring about not alienating That's their crazy. audience. They were afraid of the audience and afraid of Donald Trump. And these messages I'm are so shocked really about this. quite damning and they reveal it. Oliver, as these messages were revealed, has Fox News been covering those revelations in the last 24 hours? Fox News is, is surprisingly not covering uh, the revelations, exposing their... Surprisingly. Oh, that's also surprising. That's also shocking. Yeah, I just... Here's what I'm going to say. Okay, this is Oliver Darcy, right? Like, why? Why do these guys um, still try to, like, maintain this illusion that this is, like... That there's somehow any kind of journalistic integrity on the Fox News side? Just, like, stop being polite about it. Be like, just like we've known for a very long time, they're fucking lying to their audience. They're lying to one another. They don't believe any of the shit that they say. And these dumbass hogs eat it up. At least that would be kind of interesting. It would be a kind of interesting narrative or a relatively interesting way to cover the same fucking news story that these guys have covered for a very long time. The reality is that CNN does similar things uh, of this magnitude as well. Just never to the same degree as Fox News and obviously never as like uh, as as awful as Fox News, but you know, it is what it is. Their own network and I would not That surprisingly was clearly sarcastic. No, but like there is this weird journalistic integrity. We are objective fucking attitude that these guys need to pump. And part of it, uh, part of it stems from the fact that Fox News, whether we'd like to admit it or not, is still mainstream media. And like, you know, so for that reason, they have to make it seem like they're like, oh, this is another mainstream media outlet that has gone astray. Like, that's not the case. All mainstream media does this shit. Also note that uh, the, uh, the Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, has also not uh, covered this uh, as well. Um, Fox News. I, not I that it matters. Say, like, I'm, I'm basically tone policing CNN. But like, we already know. Everybody knows. You guys know. Just have fun with it. Just have fun with the story. You know what I mean? Which we will be doing as is well. Accusing um, this uh, of Dominion of, of cherry picking quotes 
um, in this court filing, but I went through it. I mean, it's it's hundreds of pages, and it, they they lay out a mountain of evidence that is uh, is really an indictment of the network. So, in part of that too, we've been pointing out in some of this, uh, Tucker Carlson pointing out Sidney Powell is lying. Mm -hmm. By the way, I caught her. It's insane. Laura Ingram says Sydney is a complete nut. No one will work with her. Ditto with Rudy. Uh, Carlson actually says it's unbelievably offensive to me. Our viewers are good people and they believe it. That one really sticks with me. Our viewers are good people mm -hmm. and they believe it. They're not good people. To be fair, they're not. And we're going to keep spoon feeding what we know are lies to them? It's so, I mean, Tucker Carlson, despite saying these things, went on air last night after this court filing had come out. He went on air last night and cast out on the 2020 election mm -hmm. at the top of his program. They know it's false. And more importantly, they know that no one in their audience either trusts CNN or will even see this coverage. That's the point. They can get away with this because no one inside of the Fox News audience is going to ever see this news story. Or if they see it, they're just going to go, oh, that's fake news. This is what these people do. They don't care about the facts. They know behind the scenes that the election was not rigged, that it was not stolen, and yet, in search of profit, in search of power, they go on air and feed the audience this nonsense. And they- This is a pot calling the kettle black, if we're being honest, Fox is discussing, but CNN also does this 100%. I mean, the degree to which CNN does this is never to the same degree as Fox News, though. Fox News is like unshackled it, okay? Yeah, it's not. It's just like CNN does this for warmongering. CNN does this for anti-China sentiment. CNN does this for like anti-health care and anti, uh, you know, socialization initiatives. CNN does this for like America's enemies. Fox News does that as well. But as far as domestic, as far as domestic issues goes, like they do cover ups. They don't cover certain issues regularly. You know what I mean? But it's, it's never to the same degree. Fox News does it all the fucking time for every single thing and even in like increasingly more deadly ways. So how does an individual like Alex Jones clear his name in this manner? Isn't CNN and all major lib news networks on his ass too much? No, Alex Jones does this all the time too. Degree Fox News is politically slanted. CNN is economically slanted. I mean, it, you can't be economically slanted without a political slant. They know it's nonsense and they still do it and... I don't know what there is to say about it, but it does expose this network as not interested in the facts, not interested in the truth. Wow, that's nonsensical. If you can't agree with one single policy, believe that the right side holds, then you're wildly uneducated politically. Give me an, give me an example of what you agree with. Um, no, as a centrist, CNN and Fox are both equally trash. Okay, centrist, explain to me. Give me a, give me a right-wing policy that you agree with right now. Is it like uh, that... We should be able to fuck green uh. M&Ms, okay? If that's your take, then I will agree, you know? That's like the one Tucker Carlson uh, take that I'll probably agree with is that like, yeah, the m and should be more fuckable, honestly. They used to be, America used to be a free nation. We didn't have the fucking nanny state. We didn't have, you know, uh, we, didn't, we didn't have anybody telling us that like, we can't fuck the M&Ms. Free market economy. I'm a day trader, and this is fundamentally a right-wing belief. Just as over, just an overarching example. Oh, of course, you're a day trader. Uh, I told you, give me one example of the fucking right. Do you think the left is against the free... The, not the left, but do you think the, the liberal Democratic Party is against the free market economy? They are neoliberals, just as the right-wing is. But as far as a free market economy goes, there is no such thing as a free market economy. It has never existed, and it will never exist. The free market is propped up by the American government heavily subsidizing pretty much every facet of the supposedly free market. They pick and choose. They constantly fucking... They constantly are... They're constantly fucking gaming it. Subsidies, tax breaks, tax benefits is uh, or, or major amounts of infrastructure spending but even if we were to assume that there was such a thing as a free market economy um, somalia does have a free market economy i guess yeah but if you think that there was such a thing do you feel like the liberal democratic party is not in support of that sorry i mean in terms of taxes free market growth deregulation i don't agree with the most right-wing social issues though but you agree with free market growth and deregulation 
How do you feel about the Ohio uh, uh, chemical spill? I mean, that's just one example. It happens thousands of t- uh, it happens thousands of times a year, and in infinitely worse ways. There's also parts like the the PFAS uh, contamination that occurs in every part of your life. But um, there is no fucking way that you think that deregulation is a good idea that like someone should be uh, able to agree with. Also, as far as deregulation and free market growth goes, once again, these are ideas that the liberal Democratic Party also espouses, defends, promotes, pushes. Uh, I am against the Democratic Party because of their uh, closeness to uh, the, these kinds of ideas, because of their advocacy for these kinds of ideas. And as far as taxes goes, you know, that's how you fund roads. That's how you fund education. That's how you fund all of the initiatives that you personally think are being created in the free market economy. Without taxes, there would be no subsidies for oil production. Without taxes, there would be no subsidies for agricultural production. Without taxes, you would have nothing. There would be no free market economy because there would be no economy. Ah. <sighs> Oh, God, the chem spill was a joke. Handled horribly. Good example by you, honestly. Not all deregulation is good. No, no deregulation is good. Deregulation is not a good thing. Regulation is written. All matter of regulation is written with blood. Okay? Regulation comes after many, many years of profit-seeking capital owners cheating the system as hard as they can. Regulation, for example, we just covered... Uh, we just covered child labor. I don't think you're an advocate for child labor. I don't think you think the children should be working in the mines. That's regulation. Child labor laws that exist in this country are, is regulation. And it was a hard fought battle by people that you would consider, you know, crazy lefty commies or whatever, who fought long and hard for that to uh, come into place. To be fair, there are no absolutes. There are scenarios in which regulations are made to protect monopoly power. I mean, give me an example of deregulation of the sort, and we'll cover it. Yes, there is a regulatory capture, absolutely. That's a byproduct of capitalism, though. Capitalism is a corrosive, cancerous mentality. It will overtake any kind of system that allows it to exist. Some is only in place to collect dollars. Do you believe the right side is more business-oriented in terms of pushing growth and profitability? No, they're not. And also, I'm not in, I am not business oriented. I don't believe in caring about businesses. I care about the people that create businesses, the people that create the value. And if you care about working class individuals, if you care about the workers, you're always going to be kind of anti-business from a right wing perspective. Any matter of regulatory capture you describe to me, any matter of like regulatory capture. Uh, that that artificially creates a monopoly, I can tell you was originally or could be originally used for good, but has been bastardized. You can talk about IP, for example. That's a good one, right? That is ultimately not the worst thing uh, in theory. I understand it. But the way it's utilized, the way patents are utilized is specifically to protect uh, capital owners in a way that does not benefit the workers. There's these insane rules around film permitting in national parks that completely ignore YouTubers and journalists. The regulations were designed for big film productions, but are an impossible burden on people like me that want to make climate docs. There was this court case, Price v. Barr, that the defendant won, and MPS just won the appeal. It's a crazy situation that cuffing my ability to make docs. Yes. When we talk about laws, obviously there are plenty of laws that are created, like the ag-gag laws, okay? I am not in favor of ag-gag laws, that was a right-wing provision. Let's get back to Fox News. But interested in telling the audience what they want to hear uh, so they don't and, lose And it. above all else, holding on to that audience, right? They don't want to lose those numbers. They don't want to lose the eyeballs, the advertising revenue, the numbers. Mm-hmm. Oliver, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get to, the, let's get to this. Uh, this file... This, uh, Filing in the Dominion lawsuit against Fox News is one of the most remarkable documents I've ever seen. Filled with private text between Fox stars like Hannity and Carlson plus Murdoch, all admitting they knew Fox's stolen election claims were lies. Okay? 
The text show that Fox trapped in a dilemma of its own making, afraid to admit that the election was honest because they'll lose viewers to Newsmax. Tucker rages and tries to get Fox reporter Jackie Heinrich fired after she admits the election wasn't stolen, while he simultaneously also admits the election wasn't stolen himself. Carlson told Hannity, please get her fired. Seriously, what the fuck? I'm actually shocked. It needs to stop immediately, like tonight. It's measurably hurting the company. The stock price is down. Not a joke. Tucker added, I just went crazy on Mead over it. Hannity said he had already sent to Suzanne with a, really? He then added, I'm three strikes. Wallace shit debate. Election night, a disaster. Now this BS? Nope, not going to fly. Did I mention Cavuto? Meanwhile, later that night on November 12th, Ingram was still texting with Hannity and Carlson in a group text thread. Carlson pointed to Hannity a tweet by Fox reporter Jackie Heinrich. Heinrich was fact-checking a tweet by Trump that mentioned Dominion and specifically mentioned Hannity and Dobbs broadcast that evening discussing Dominion. She correctly fact-checked the tweet, pointing out the top election infrastructure official said that there is no evidence of any voting system deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was in any way compromised. Hannity indeed had discussed with Scott. Hannity texts his team, I just dropped the bomb. Suzanne Scott received the message. She told Jay Wallace and Fox News' SVP for Corporate Communications, Irene Briganti. Sean texted me. He's standing down on responding, but not happy about this and doesn't understand how this is allowed to happen from anyone in news. Heinrich has serious nerve doing this, and if she gets this picked up, viewers are going to be further disgusted. By the next morning, Heinrich had deleted her fact-checking tweet. Here's Rupert Murdoch telling Fox News CEO, CEO Suzanne Scott to focus on winning the GA Senate races for Republicans, helping in any way we can. Meanwhile, Fox continued to broadcast his lies about Dominion as it nervously eyed Newsmax. Dude, the fact that they were afraid of Newsmax is so funny. Like, you can't rest on your own laurels. Like, you're genuinely terrified of fucking Newsmax, dude. That, like, the more unhinged you get, the more prominence you get, the more uh, you eat into the to the, you know, conservative uh, audience of watchers. Them's have to know that after 30 years, the charges of hypocrisy will never stick on conservatives. This kind of seems like West Wing shit, if amusing. I'm also not sure if Dominion winning any lawsuit doubtful will do anything good politically. It'll probably just further entrench people regarding stolen elections. They're already gerry gerrymandered, so whatever. Yeah, I do understand that. Hypocrisy only works for uh, the Democrats because Democrats care about it for some reason. And they fucking act like, uh, you know, you say some shit, uh, you're a bad person. Democrats just love killing their own, so that's probably what it is. These people should be watched, if skeptically. Trump will concede eventually, and we should, con we should concentrate on Georgia, helping any way we can. We don't want to antagonize Trump further, but Giuliani, taken with a large grain of salt, everything at stake here. Fox got into Dominion conspiracy theories in the first place because Sidney Powell got a deranged email from someone who thought she was a ghost and Anthony Scalia was murdered in a most dangerous game style human hunting expedition. Oh my God, I wish that was real. I wish that was real. That's so fire. That's such a cool thing to believe, dude. God, these guys like, yeah, schizophrenic or not, they do have like more fun. You know what I mean? Like, that's a fun-ass way to live your life, dude. Honestly, it's very, it's very cool. Sure, you're teetering borderline on what some, may people, some people may consider schizophrenia, but it's kind of cool, too, at the same time. Tucker Carlson reported, repeatedly frets in text messages to his producer that Trump is a demonic force who could destroy him if Carlson missteps. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. After January 6th, trying to thread the needle between truth and pressure from his viewers and sponsors became even more difficult. Late on January 6th, Carlson texted with Pi Pfeiffer that Trump is a demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. Tucker replied, of course they are. We're not going to follow them. And he added, what Trump is good at is destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. The Fox messages reveal Fox brass and top host tearing into Rudy Giuliani. Hannity, Rudy's an insane person. Ingram, such an idiot. Murdoch, really crazy stuff. I know for a fact from insider information that Rudy Giuliani, I mean, not Rudy Giuliani, Rupert Murdoch personally, and this is not surprising, despite his, uh, despite what Fox News was promoting and despite what right-wing media was promoting all around the world that uh, from Rupert Murdoch properties was absolutely fucking terrified of COVID. 
Did you guys know that? I know that from literal firsthand knowledge. Workers that worked in Rudy Giuliani's, like Rudy Giuliani's properties, or not Giuliani, fuck, uh, Rupert Murdoch. What am I saying? I can't give you additional information, but I know for a fucking fact that Rupert Murdoch was absolutely, ter okay, secondhand, technically, not firsthand, um, secondhand. Rupert Murdoch was terrified of COVID. Laura Ingram, Rudy's such an idiot. Sean Hannity, Rudy's acting like an insane person. Fucking lunatics. John Fawcett, Lou Dobbs, tonight producer. Giuliani is so full of shit. Ann McCartan, keeping, keeping in mind his insanity lately. Um, a fascinating detail about Fox's relationship with the MyPillow tycoon, Mike Lindell, their most important advertiser. After Lindell insulted Fox in a Newsmax appearance, Fox sent him a gift and a handwritten note from their CEO to win him back. Lindell is a major Fox News sponsor. Indeed, when Lindell made negative comments about Fox on Newsmax, Fox's executives exchanged worried emails about alienating him and sent him a gift along with a handwritten note from Suzanne Scott. Fox had a strong motive to welcome him on air. Tucker Carlson emerges in the court filing as an absolutely freaking out after the election hearing from angry viewers and worrying the Fox calling Arizona for Biden will kill his golden goose while also afraid fucking bitch Sidney Powell has gone too far. Woo! Hannity told Carlson and Ingram on November 12th in one week and one debate, they destroyed a brand that took 25 years to build and the damage is incalculable. Tucker responded, it's vandalism. The host also discussed the possibility of, comp to, of competition to Fox emerging. Hannity told him serious dollars with serious distribution could be a real problem. In my honest opinion, they need to address, but what the fuck do I know? Tucker says that could happen. Carlson told his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, that night, Sidney Powell is lying. Fucking bitch. Sean Hannity confirmed... Every day, he and his team do a very deep analysis of ratings to see audience reaction to certain stories or guests. The ratings are important. We look at ratings every day, Hannity told Steve Ducey. Fox had created major backlash with the audience after the 2020 election, stating, you don't piss off the base. He likewise texted Carlson and Ingram. The network is being rejected. I've heard from angry viewers every hour of the day all weekend, including at dinner tonight. To which Hannity replied, same, same, same. Never before has this happened. Some interesting details about <clears throat> Janine Perot in the Fox News messages. A Fox executive felt sure she was looking for a job at a competitor like Newsmax, and Fox canceled her November 7 show because they were afraid she'd push stolen election theories. She is crazy. Remember when that happened and they were acting like that's not the reason why it happened, but we knew that that is exactly why they fucking canceled her show? We could get hurt, David Clark told Lauren Peterson, that Janine Perot was angling for a job somewhere else 100%. Sean Hannity. That same day, Cooper and executive David Clark canceled Janine Perot's November 7th show. As Clark told Cooper, her guests are all going to say the election is being stolen and she pushes back at it. And if she pushes back at all, it will just be token. A Fox as Fox producer Justin Wells described, they took her off because she was being crazy. Optics are bad, but she is crazy. They still work with each other, by the way. The Dominion filing offers the best look inside Fox's internal operations that we've had in years, maybe ever. It shows Fox operating as many suspected. No compunctions about lying to viewers and desperately tackling, de desperately tacking right to avoid losing market share to competitors like Newsmax. Of course, they're self-aware, dude. These are guys who went to liberal arts colleges. Ben Shapiro. Okay. They, don't, they, they know better. They're just fucking demons. They have that dog in them half the time, like on certain issues, but they certainly know when, when things are like really, really crazy or when there's any sort of like serious material harm to the company by like a massive fucking lawsuit, they absolutely fucking lootly, they absolutely know better and they just keep going along.